Thank you for tuning into the Starving Artist Podcast, bringing you meaningful artistic conversations on a bi-weekly basis like some of your paychecks. Uh, this is our second episode, and we hope that you continue to listen forever. Um, but we really appreciate all the love and support uh, for the last episode, the likes, the shares, and all those things. Certainly uh, keep it up, and we, we certainly appreciate it. So once again, my name is Rocky Cotard. I am one of your hosts. Uh, I am an illustrator and a fine artist, and I will let the other co hosts introduce themselves all right my name is xavier taylor i'm also a illustrator graphic designer and a production uh, major um i kind of like all different types of aspects of art um, even photography as well um so that's just a little bit about me and my name is katrina i am not an artist per se but i'm here to be a moderator for this podcast <laughs> Well, thank you. So we are extremely excited to share our stories with you today and to create a platform for others to share theirs. And today we have a very special guest with us. Her name is Sonia Tene Fort, uh, an amazing designer and photographer and uh, business owner, um, a sentence of a title, clearly. Um, so welcome. And once again, uh, thank you for tuning into the Starving Artist podcast. Uh, stay with us to hear more. Uh, so Katrina will now kind of take it away and uh, share the different information as to where you can locate us online. Go ahead, Katrina. You can watch this entire podcast on our YouTube channel or on Facebook at Starving Artist Podcast. You can listen on SoundCloud at Starving Artist, or you can hit us up on our IG at Starving underscore Artist underscore Podcast. Be sure to like, comment, and share wherever you choose to watch or listen so you'll be notified when we are uploading new content. And we're just getting started to look out for additional platforms in the near future. So, Rocky, what do you have in store for us today? Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Katrina, for that. Uh, hopefully, if you have not followed us yet, you do, uh, because that would be nice. Um, so, as I mentioned, uh, thank you for staying with us. And as I mentioned before, we have a wonderful guest with us. Um, our first guest, our first virtual guest. First guest. Uh, so, woo. Um, <laughs> her name is Sonia Tanate Fort, as I mentioned earlier. She runs the S. Tanate Designs and Photography Company. In prior conversation with Sonia, uh, she said she is nervously excited to be with us today, which I think is such a wonderful phrase for the time we live in. And I just imagine many of us might feel the nervous excitement uh, all at once. So anyways, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm mentioning a lot of things. Uh, Sonia is a graphic designer, web designer, and photographer whose work is rapidly gaining notoriety. Uh, her portraiture and her urban and rural images comprise a powerful and intense narrative of the people and places she selects, and often transforming her chosen subject matter into visual poetry. Wow, that's beautiful. Wow. <laughs> okay. I only hope I can live up to that. <laughs> yeah, that sounds pretty really good. <laughs> so, that sounds really good. So, um, we do have a couple of questions for you today, Sonia, and certainly we appreciate you coming in. Um, um, but. But I do want to offer you the time and space to kind of introduce yourself to us as well, uh, you know, away from all the words that I kind of just, just was able to use just now. Okay. Um, as you mentioned, my name is Sonia Tanae Ford. I'm born and raised in Massachusetts, youngest of 10. Mm, um, 10. Yeah, yeah. Just became a great aunt for the 14th time. Wow. Great aunts. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Number 15 is on the way in August. Um, wow. But yeah, so I'm looking forward to when we can get out of here and I can go see the little one and take pictures of her. <laughs> um, yeah, so that is that. Uh, as you said, I started my company, Estenay Designs and Photography in July of 2017. So I'm coming up on the okay. third anniversary of that. Um, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for being with us today, as I mentioned. Um, so this is actually a very important question to all of us 
maybe just me, but I'm not sure. <laughs> but I must ask. <laughs> so, Sonia, what is the one ice cream flavor that you cannot live without? We have determined our own in the last episode, and we want to yes, know yours yes, now. Yes, yes, I saw. Um, <laughs> We're counting on you. Yeah. The, well, the one that I... The one that's my favorite and the one I can't live without are two different things. So the one that's my favorite wow. is Brigham's peppermint stick ice cream. Peppermint. It has to be Brigham's if it's peppermint. Brigham's. Mm. But the one that I could not live without is vanilla. Mm-hmm. Hear me out. Hear me out. Vanilla. Vanilla is the base of anything else. Sure. Cherry. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, Rocky, you want black raspberry? Throw some black raspberries <laughs> in it. Me, I want peppermint. Throw some peppermint in it. You want dolce de leche? Throw some caramel. Hold on, hold on. Do you put fudge on it or anything? Like gummy bears or just just vanilla? No, that's what I'm saying. With the vanilla, you can make whatever you oh, want. Oh, I see what the you're saying. The vanilla can become whatever you want it to be. That's why that's the one I can't live without, because then I can create any kind of thing I want. Cookie and cream. That sounds like a loophole. <laughs> hey, you asked. That's, a, that's, that's what vanilla is. I can make it whatever I want it to be. Fathom how I would go from vanilla to black raspberry. <laughs> Not yet. You can't. I need a lot more experience. You need a life. blender. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I know you mentioned um, a little bit about, you know, where you're from. Uh, I wonder, how did that influence your interest in uh, becoming an artist at all? Did that have any effect on it? Or photography, design? I come from, actually, um, all five of my brothers could draw. I used to draw. I used Mm -hmm. to draw a minimum of five hours a day from when I was four years old until I turned 18. My dad was... Full time job. <laughs> Still is, but <laughs> um, we couldn't leave the house, or at least us younger girls couldn't leave the house and couldn't leave the front or backyard until we turned eighteen. So, various different types of artists. That's that nice. Wow. Are, or um, photographers. I, you know, met a cousin on Facebook um, about six months ago who was <laughs> <an> incredible <laughs> photographer. Very recent. <laughs> yeah, so you're yeah. In your blood is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of. It kind of seems like we're just kind of artsy type of people. Mm-hmm. I must say, um, I do have you know five siblings, and the fights for us tend to be over cereal. So just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't imagine cereal. ten. No, nah, we didn't <laughs> fight over cereal because the only thing my dad would buy is cornflakes, which most of us to this day detest. Will not. Yeah. Um, my <laughs> sister, uh, one of my sisters, the one that's before me. She, quote unquote, even hates roosters because she had so many cornflakes oh. and that's the logo. <laughs> like, she doesn't even like roosters. You have to drown those point. things. In- so that, yeah, our fights weren't about cereals, mainly probably clothes or whatever. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> was some special, right? Yeah, the bathroom yeah, for sure. That, that. So, um, you know, last segment, we actually also, you know, spoke a lot on, um, you know, the drive of an artist during the time of Corona. Um, and I think, you know, you've kind of on through your online presence, I've seen some of the stuff you've done, uh, probably definitely not all of it, but, um, I specifically saw the pregnancy shoot, uh, where you gave the client direction, uh, as they got into a fabulous composition for an image. I, I remember liking that image and wanting to like it again. <laughs> um, That's actually my niece that just had the baby. Oh, so yeah. I was, yeah. I was supposed to have, uh, supposed to do that shoot for her. Uh, for them, but obviously that couldn't happen. So um, we ended up, she ended up taking pictures and we decided I would, she would take them and I would edit them. So she ended up taking them with her iPhone. And just, um, so she would send me things and I'm, you know, turn here, put your head down, you know, you're too much in his shadow, that kind of thing. Um, and she would retake them. <laughs> they look really, really cool. So how do you kind of maintain your sense of, like, drive throughout this corona? I kind of hear a lot of, like, you know, pieces of you sending work here, virtual shows. Where is your, your drive during this corona? What are you kind of doing? What things are you engaging yourself in to remain artistic? Well, since you follow me, you know there was a weird moment of boredom where I was uh, dressing up my teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. pictures of my teddy bear was actually right. the <laughs> denim jacket that I bought for my new niece and mm-hmm. some sunglasses whatever and then you know taking pictures of my mask and cleaning products but that was actually for a um, COVID-19 related um, exhibition that hopefully I'll be a part of um, but honestly 
for me, being creative is like, you know, if your body's hungry or if your body's thirsty, like with me, there's only so long I can go without doing something creative. Like it's a, it's, it's a craving that I have to, that I have to satisfy. I just, you know, a week, maybe two weeks, but if I haven't touched my computer or if I haven't designed anything or if I haven't shot a picture, it's like, oh, it, it's like I'm, I, I'm forced to, it's, I just have to. It's, I don't know, it's, it's just something that's innate. I that's a good way to put it by saying like it's a, a, a body need, like something, like, cause that's how I feel. Like it, it would have to be something where it's like a uh, an urge or um, an itch that you have to scratch. Right. And um, I like how you put that. That's nice. And um, thank you for um, answering those uh, questions, Tanae. That was uh, I like how you're very sincere and you're very um, authentic about the way you're you're, you're answering these questions. Um, so that's very good. It's going to be really good for our next segment that we're going to have with Katrina, the moderator. Um, and she's going to have some rapid fire questions for you. So after this commercial break, we're going to go straight to Katrina. Back to you. Tell me something. Uh, tell me a little bit about the origin of the word imagine and what does it mean to your organization? So I thought of it more as um, sky is the limit. So when you're a little kid, they tell you to, you know, if you're a creative, you know, sky's the limit to what you can think of. And so that's kind of where it formed. It's actually a compound word, the word imagine, the word action. Do your friends make fun of you because you wear shirts that are ripped? Shirts that don't have color or anything cool on them? Are you known for being the one that wears all black all the time? How about you try one of these designs, guaranteed to make you at least 1% happier? Buy one for your friends, your mom, your dad, even your grandpa or grandma at RockyCotard.com. Again, buy one for your friends, your mom, your dad, even your grandpa or grandma at RockyCotard.com. No. So welcome back from that commercial break. And we're going to give our guests an opportunity to answer some rapid fire questions today. So Sonia, we're going to put one minute on the clock. One minute. One minute. One minute. <laughs> and we're going to get your responses to these questions. Okay, you ready? Yes. All right, here we go. What is your favorite pizza topping? Pepperoni. Wow. Pepperoni. What, is, what is your least favorite household chore? Dishes. Dishes, but there's a long uh, explanation, yeah. explanation for that. <laughs> That's my baby sister. Apple or Android? Android. Yeah! Android all the way. Yes. The attack. <laughs> Ten pin or candle pin? Neither. Billion. Billion. <laughs> Billion. Oh, okay. Pool. I didn't think about that. All right. <laughs> She's Jordan or LeBron? Jordan. 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 Wow. Uh, honestly, Man. that's a tough... <laughs> It's not tough for me. Okay, it's tough for you because you probably weren't alive in the Jordan era. But anyone who was alive in the Jordan era? Yeah. Jordan all day. Okay, sneakers or stilettos? Sneakers. All 48 pairs. And where was your last vacation spot? Last vacation, Georgia, Atlanta. All right, that's our time. Thank you so much. That was a minute. All right. All right. All right. Although I didn't get to go <laughs> anywhere or see much of anything because everything had just gotten locked down. So yeah, uh, yeah. Was Corona. it a vacation? <laughs> I went. It was supposed to be vacation. I went for my um, nephew's wedding, but I went an extra, you know, four or five days so that I can hit up the aquarium, uh, the Coca Cola mm. Museum, you know, some other things. What? Yeah, yeah, didn't they have get the to best do aquarium in Georgia. Yeah, they closed down. Yeah, everything had everything got shut oh, down. Oh, it closed by then. Oh. It closed the day after I got there. Although the day that I got there, I did get to get in this fabulous rib joint, which I can't remember the name the of the bar mm. place. And they had, um, they had southern, yum, 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 southern yum. fried chicken fried ribs. So they wow. batter and deep fry them like chicken. Fried. Oh, okay. Rib, best ribs I've had in my phrase. life. Oh, oh my goodness, they were amazing. They were amazing. Fried. Well, my parents are from Mississippi, so I'm used to. So my parents fry everything in bacon grease: green tomatoes, corn, 
pancakes, everything gets fried in bacon grease. It's beautiful. Oh, beautiful. I mean, <laughs> if you're not frying it in bacon grease, are you even What's frying the point? What is like, the point? I mean, we even, we even fry pork chops in bacon grease, okay? We're cooking pork and pork. Everything has you know, to be in bacon grease. All right, so um, let's let's head over to Rocky and see what he has for segment number two. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so, of course, we want to say to our listeners, welcome back. You know, uh, th- that was definitely our welcome back from Katrina. So um, thank you for continuing to listen to our podcast. We always want to thank you at the beginning, in the middle, and in the end. So thank you. Um, so <laughs> this is the second part of the discussion. Um so we definitely wanted to kind of focus on insecurities. Um, so nervously excited. Um, so I want to give us a brief moment to think about those two words. Nervous, excited. All right. Now, Sonia, we have, you know, those words, um, you know, and, and like the creative scene. Uh, and oftentimes it's imagined that a creative person is a free spirit. Uh, that does not necessarily struggle with insecurities. Where in or even around your work would you see, would you say that insecurities exist? Um, Definitely in the photography. Definitely in the photography. And um, I'm I'm not sure why and why so much because, you know, like I said, I'm a self-taught graphic designer, but I'm not insecure about graphic design. But photography, for some reason, is... um, I'm honestly very, very insecure about that because I'm, you know, not being formally trained and not being as technically sound and savvy as a lot of photographers that I know or follow and stuff. I mean, I've evolved over the last few years that I've been doing it, you know, since 2013, obviously I've learned and gotten better. And so, you know, the, the, the insecurities aren't as much as they used to be, but, um, before every shoot, I mean, literally before, when first starting out, especially like the first few major events I got, I would break out in hives. I would be so nervous. Like the oh. night before, I'd, I'd have to take be taking allergy pills, you know, to go there because I had broken out in hives. I was so nervous and, and stressed about it. And the same thing, even now, I'm, I'm nervous before pretty much any shoot I do, except for, you know, still life fine arts. And I think well, that's one of the reasons why I enjoy fine art so much. Um, there's no there's no pressure in it and even the other ones is probably more self-imposed pressure um but for me the fine art there's no there's no there's no pressure in it and and sometimes even sometimes in fine art that's the beauty of fine art um the mistake is actually ends up being a beautiful piece of artwork because then you know if some if a shot came out blurry blurry then it's abstract it becomes- yeah i would definitely um kind of connect with you on like some of the things that you mentioned as well um i think um for me um i i certainly have taken some like painting classes but mm-hmm. i never felt like those kind of nailed in the painting that i do in my personal time for instance the classes i was taking i was kind of copying other people's artwork and not really using them as reference and so um, when I found myself in front of my canvas, I would certainly reference those in the back of my mind, um, but they would never make it to like the forefront of my image because I always wanted to represent uh, things that I was thinking. So um, I think that insecurities within my work, uh, in, interestingly enough, actually has to do with the process. I know earlier you mentioned like, you know, <clears throat> the, the thinking and the doing for you are kind of like one step, two step kind of thing. I think for me, it, it happens that, you know, for, for, for example, um, I did have, you know, a show at Simmons uh, last year. And I remember this very clearly. Before I actually got to the space to see the space where I was going to be creating the work, I was so nervous. <laughs> I was like, am I an artist? Do I know what I'm doing? <laughs> am I good at this? <laughs> So you're like me before an exhibition. Yeah, can I? Yeah. Why was I? Why was I doing this? Uh, yeah. Who, who made yeah. this decision? And so, so all yeah. these, all these <laughs> really insecure thoughts kind of came into yeah. my mind. Or even recently, I uh, was contacted by one of my, uh, you know, former classmates to work on, you know, a, a book. And the idea process was really the part where I was insecure because 
I found that I had to come up with something that was meaningful to me um, and therefore would translate to the person I, who I was kind of uh, giving the idea to. And I think that's part of my illustrator training, like being able to communicate a feeling or an emotion in the most effective way with an image, <laughs> which is so like, it's, it's a daunting task when you yeah. think about it. But when I start doing it, there is no insecurity. I'm like, yes, I know what I'm doing. Duh, this is a line. This is a face. This is a smile. This is a sad smile. This is a happy smile, you know? And so I think for me, the insecurity is actually outside of actually doing the work and hap actually happens in the thought process. I don't know if that's the same for you, X. Yeah, um, for me, um, you guys both kind of touched on it where... Um, you know, for me, it's toward the end. And sometimes it happens, I had to look this up, it's called the um, imposter syndrome. And what happens is, it happens with a lot of creative professionals, not just artists. And I, I looked this up and uh, they, uh, a creative person had mentioned that um, when you come to the point where you've created all these works, and you, you're looking back on past successes, um, sometimes you feel like you may uh, self-sabotage yourself or you may, you may, um, it, you know, you see the flaws that other people don't in your work. Yes, I do. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, <laughs> and that, will, that will trip you up and it'll, it'll make you become like paralyzed and you have to fight it's like you you have a battle in your mind, like who's gonna come on top, and sometimes you know you come on the bottom and then that work doesn't get done, and it is it is like a battle and people just don't know. Yeah, there's always that moment, uh, those or however many moments between when I deliver the pictures to somebody, and when they get back to me and tell me whether or not they they like them that I'm like kind of sweating, like, yeah. I hope they like these. Yeah. I don't know if they're yeah. gonna like these. Every time, not one time, every time I'm like, I hope they're gonna like these. I mean, I've never yeah. had anybody be like, no, I don't like these, I hate <laughs> but, but, but you know what I mean? But you know, there's yeah. there's just the, the waiting kind of with bated breath to, be, to hear back whether or not they're happy with, with the work that you've done for them or even the graphic design with, with the work that you've yeah. done for them, you know, it's, um, and you're always, you're always putting yourself out there. So, you know, it's tough. I think that's what I was going to say. Obviously I'm not in your situation, but it seems like for being an artist, when you deliver something, it's like a piece of you. And so you feel like you're being judged as a person and not just the work. So that's where yeah. the insecurity will come in. Perfectly summed up. That's, that's exactly it. I'm Sonia Tanae Fort signing off. Rocky Cotard signing off. This is Professor X signing off. This is Katrina signing off. Rocky Starving Artist Podcast. <laughs> the Starving Artist Podcast. The Starving Artist Podcast. The Starving Artist Podcast. All right, cut. cut. <laughs> <laughs>